All right. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> um, re recording this introduction really fast. Uh, it's Wednesday, September 25th. Thank you for joining us for our final demonstration, our cooking demonstration for the Bayern Cook Smart program. And thank you to all of the participants who are here. Muchas gracias y bienvenidos a nuestra programa. Esta es una demostración virtual para la programa de Bayern Cook Smart. Y para todos ustedes que son participantes, muchas gracias por asistirnos. Um, without further ado, Chef Cindy, the, the floor is yours. Oh, I thank you. Well, welcome. Can you can everyone hear me? Just give me a thumbs up if you can if you can hear me good. Um, can you get rid of the okay on the top so I can see the faces? At any time you want to because I got the camera coming this way and I'm looking at you this way. So if it looks like I'm not looking at you, I think that I am because I see your little pictures. So um I'm here to teach you how to use this stove, this little cooktop here, which is amazing. And I know that a lot of people um, don't have gas or maybe their, their cooking facilities um, aren't working. So I take these around with me to do cooking demonstrations and I use them here in the kitchen and they are fantastic. So what I really like about it is it has a timer and power. So I'm gonna turn on the power here. I'm gonna have it at 5.5. I think everybody can see that. And you can kind of hear, I don't know if you can hear the little cord that's there. Um, what's great is this isn't hot and this gets hot. So you can cook almost immediately. So I'm gonna take a little bit of oil. I'm gonna be following the recipe that you have there, making vegetarian chili first. So I'm gonna take a little bit of avocado oil, about I'd say um, a tablespoon or so, just enough to kind of coat, I don't know if you can see that kind of just coat the bottom of the pan. And that's gonna heat up really quick because this pan heats up on the bottom really nice. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna do mise en place, um, which is everything in its place. This is what it's called mise en place. I've got everything here all lined up in the way that it goes. What I've got here is mirepoix, which is a combination of celery, onions, and carrots. And I'm going to pop them. And you can hear it sizzling. It goes so quick. It's awesome. So I'm going to just kind of move it around. And you know what? I never add them. I always do my, my um, carrots, onions, and celery just to kind of get them kind of soft before I the How do I? So if I leave the lid off, going to evaporate. If I put the lid on, it's going to keep the moisture in here. You know, 70% of all these veggies are water, if not more. Water and fiber. That's why it's so good to use fresh fruits and veggies. So I'm just kind of go here. And this cooks really quickly. So if you're cooking along with me, if you're on five, that would be great. Push it on. You know that you can only have one. You have to have a dedicated circuit. So if you have a plug, unplug anything else that you have on there. If you have a toaster or something, unplug it because you want to be able to have all the power go through. Yeah. One second. Let's try and fix that. Okay. The volume dropped. Um. Chelsea, can we turn on the cam or can we turn on the sound on your phone and turn down the Yeah. Can you work on that one? All right, let's mute Doug's and get Chelsea's unmuted. Turn up volume. What? Can you guys hear it better? Are we okay? Doug unmute on his. Um, it should be right now. I'm going to take a picture. Yeah. 
Chef Cindy, if we can pause for a sec, let's try and figure this out. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can everybody hear me? Okay. If I start to go down, let me know. Okay. Thank you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this back on. I turned it off and it immediately stopped cooking, which is great. Like if you get a phone call or something, you don't wanna continue to cook, just turn it off and it immediately goes down in, in the uh, temperature. Okay. So I'm kind of looking like that. Okay. It's got little moisture going on here this is when i add my garlic because what you don't want to do is you don't want to burn your garlic so i've added a tablespoon of garlic to that Ooh, i can already smell how awesome it is okay so we're stirring it up flatten it up now i've added some I just pulled veggies out of the fridge too. So I think in your recipe, I've got zucchini and spinach, but I had some bell pepper, yellow and green, or yellow and red rather. So I'm adding those right here. The bell, you can add bell pepper, you can add mushrooms. Um, just any kind of veggie would be good in your chili. Yes. Are we making, oh, we're making the chili right now? Yeah, the vegan Great. chili right now. Great. You can also awesome. um, add meat to this. Reduce the amount of beans and add um, like a half a pound of meat, whether it be chicken, turkey, ground turkey, or beef. Stretch the beef if you have the protein from the meat. Okay, so this is got so I still have it on five. The next thing you do is you add all of your spices. So I have the cumin, the chili powder, the salt, the pepper. I add them all now. And what you want to do is you want to toast the vegetables. I mean, the, yeah, toast the vegetables with the spices. You want to make sure that all of these spices, dried herbs get are toasted and infused into your carrot, celery, onion, and garlic. Sometimes people will put the herbs in after at the end, like when they're making spaghetti sauce, they'll saute up the onions, they'll put in the tomatoes, the sauce, the oil, whatever, and then they throw the Italian herbs on top. It never infuses. And what you want is you wanna get this all nice and toasted. Whatever you're making, you're making stew, whatever you're doing dried herbs into, always make sure you put them with your fat. So it's gonna look like that. Oh, Cindy, we have a question. Um, somebody wants to know, or Abe wants to know, why do you use power level five instead of higher? Enough. I don't want to burn it. And five seems to do real well. You know, you're going to find your comfort too. All right. So I've got all that going on. I'm going to let that just. Yeah. The fragrances. You'll smell everything when you're doing this. You'll smell all the herbs and it's just fantastic. Okay. I got them all toasted. The next thing I'm gonna put in is Z because I want to infuse those with the herbs and Sorry, the garlic guys. and the onions. And everything. Am I cutting out again? Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
I can speak louder. Can you guys hear me? When you can't hear me like this, so that I know that you can't hear me. But um, what I like to do is I like all of my vegetables be coated with all of the flavors, the onions, all of the herbs, everything coated. There's a little bit of, of glucose and fructose in all vegetables. That's how it grows. All of the vitamins and minerals, the minerals come up from the ground, vitamins come from the sunlight on the leaves. So they have to have some kind of natural sugar. And you know, like when you um, bite into a raw onion, it's like, oh, but if you cook it, it caramelizes and out comes the sweetness. Well, that's the same. That will happen with all vegetables. That'll happen with your zucchini, your carrots, all vegetables, especially your root veggies. So this is really, I don't know if you can see this now, it's really coming together and everything is infused. That bell pepper, the zucchini, all the flavors are all kind of married together now with the seasoning. So I'm just kind of moving it around, moving it around. The next thing I'm gonna add is fresh tomatoes. I think you can see that, fresh tomatoes. I get these at Trader Joe's. They're about two seventy a can. And then I've got, so this is gonna be awesome. And now my tomato sauce is gonna absorb all of those wonderful flavors that are in the spices. Nice. All those herbs, all those veggies, all that good flavors, especially now um, being summertime. So I'm also going to put in, I love tomato paste. So I've got this um, organic tomato paste, 90, I believe it's 99 cents. I open both ends and then I just push it out like this. Comes out really easy. And then you don't have to struggle getting your tomato paste out. Again, I'm going to put it in here, stir it around. The tomato paste gives it, uh, it's got an intense flavor. And it just added to those crushed tomatoes. It's amazing. Okay. So we've got it all nice and thick. Because we cook these veggies ahead of time, when we're cooking the veggies, they're releasing their flavors. They're getting all soft in here. The water's coming out. Oh, I'm supposed to be looking up here. So sorry. Um, this is going to cook really quickly because all the flavors are infused. Okay. So this is what it looks like now. Pretty amazing. The next thing I'm going to put in is frozen spinach. Again, Trader Joe's, $1.99. So you can see all of these wonderful vegetables that are in here just makes this so amazing. It's just, it's flavorful, it's healthy, it's hearty. And remember, all these veggies, everything has water in it. So you really don't need to add any more water. So now it looks like this, which is amazing. Then I've got four different kinds of beans. I just got four cans at Trader Joe's, or you can soak your own beans, whichever you want to do. I've got kidney beans, black beans, garbanzo beans. Oh, I've got kidney beans, black beans, garbanzo beans. I need to remember I'm talking there. And I'm just going to toss those in. I'm going to stir this up. So if I leave the lid off, it's going to dry up. When I put the lid on, it'll steam and cook and all of the flavors are going to marry together in the water. The liquid that's in there is going to stay right there. It's going to be amazing because all the zucchini and stuff, they're just in the process of breaking down. So if you can see it's this thick, I don't know if you can see that. I have to show you here. Okay. I got to remember what camera to look at. Does anybody have Ooh, any we have a question. questions so far? Were the Mushroom beans added whole okay. cans of each 
kind? Yes, I had a full can, all four cans, and I rinsed them and I put them in here. Like I said, you could do half meat and half the amount of beans, but you can see this will easily, easily feed six people. And maybe, maybe I have eight or ten dollars worth of ingredients in here. All right, so I'm just gonna put the lid on it like this and I'm gonna let it set. It'll take about another, mm, I would say 10, 15 minutes and it's done. Chef, Cindy, uh, do you change the setting for simmer? You leave it on? Well, right now, when, as, soon as, I see it come, as soon as I see it bubble on the top, then on to low, all right? I want to build up enough heat that it bubbles. Yeah, it's almost there. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is one of my favorites. It's um, rosemary chicken. And it's gonna have a really nice sauce. So I've got um, thigh meat, skinless, boneless, cut it, um, cut it in half. I've got my garlic, salt, pepper, fresh rosemary, lemon. Again, I have mirepoix. I don't know if I put that in the recipe, but I did put that as a base because it's gonna make a nice sauce underneath. So this is set this to the side. I have another stove. And it will continue to go. Okay. So notice is everybody following along here? So notice when the pot was taken off the uh, unit shut off it shut off um i'm being cut off on the top oh there oh so i can see okay you guys see me okay so notice that the pot shut off the okay shut off. so everything's shut off this is not hot anymore and as soon as i put it on it goes right to five so i've got a little more oil today i'm using avocado oil or you can use coconut oil or just the fat that comes right from the chicken. So I don't need a lot. And again, I'm gonna let this heat up. And then I'm gonna do this. I don't know if you have this in what you're, but I like to put this in. So I'm gonna heat this up, same way. That should be in everyone's recipe. Sorry. Can you guys hear her? Can you hear me okay? So, no. They can hear me. Can you hear me better now? Is it louder? Do I need to be louder or am I just breaking up? Just breaking up. Hmm. I think when you guys eat this, you're going to have to get it. You all cut together. Bring your little stuff, bring your little bags and stuff, and we can put together a little bit of time. And here in Lafayette, at 911, Barada Road, Sweet 103, Chef Cindy. And I'm with East Bay Health, working with two doctors and uh, their family practitioners and half of our clientele. Can we hear her or no? Can you guys hear me at all? No. No. What's going on? We can't hear you because we're breaking up. What if we can move this? Yeah. How's that? Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, move it back a little bit more. Maybe it's the sound yeah. from the soap. Is that better? Can you hear me better or less? Better? Up if it's good, down if it's no. Oh, okay, good. All right. So um, I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday here at 911 Moraga Road. 
come on in and see me. You can get my information or the phone. You can't hear me. Internet connection is unstable. Okay, is it back? Is it back? Yes? Okay, it's back. Um, did you get my address and everything? Did I 911 Moraga Road, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? I love to cook. Bring your little stove. We'll plug you in, or I've got stoves here and all the, uh, the pots. So I did the same, same thing. I'm getting this all kind of married. And then I'm going to take my chicken. I'm going to take my garlic first. Whoops. I almost didn't put my garlic in. I love garlic and everything. Can you guys still hear me? Yes? What I do is I go to um, Costco or Sam's Club and I get the big bag of peeled garlic. And then I put it in a, I put it in little containers like this and I stick it in the freezer. And um, I always have fresh garlic for any of my recipes. Make sure you put a little avocado oil in that when you do it. Uh, don't waste extra virgin olive oil when you're cooking. Butter is another really good thing to use. Butter, um, avocado oil, coconut oil. So they're talking a lot about um, ultra processed foods and how bad they are for you. And basically ultra processed food is um, you get it and you don't know what Exactly. You can't figure out how to make it. Mm -hmm. And hear yes, no. Can you hear me? No. Two messages. It's cutting off. Can you see everything? Can you see everything? Yeah. Okay. They can see it. Okay. So that's that. Then I take the chicken and I'm going to turn it up to eight. You can see that? It's at eight now. Put the chicken on here. Um, chef, we had a question. Uh, why did you say not to waste extra virgin olive oil while cooking? Um, why don't I use extra virgin olive oil when I'm cooking? Is that the question? Is it why don't I use it? Yes. Okay. It's a waste of your money. And it doesn't have this high, bur you can't cook this high with it to to keep the flavor. Extra virgin olive oil, I want to infuse or put a, have a little um, olive oil on my chicken when it's done. I'll put it on afterwards because I don't want to cook it because it breaks down. Avocado oil and butter, um, especially if it's ghee, uh, which is you taking off, you, you boil it up and you take off um, the foam off the top and on the bottom, the particles that burn, that's another really good thing. Okay, so I've got this. Now I'm gonna take my rosemary and I just strip it like this. We got a question. How do you turn it to eight? I'm sorry, what? Uh, yep, I turned it to eight because I wanna brown it. I wanna brown the chicken. So one is sweating and one is sauteing. So I just get fresh rosemary. I go just like this. Yeah, we had a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they wanted to know, on theirs, it looks like it goes from five straight to hot. How did you get it to go to eight instead? I just put plus. 
Oh, okay. Minus plus. Minus plus. So you have both temperature control and power control. Yes. Temperature and power. So you can see um, I've got the rosemary on the top. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to cut more. Is it on your side? It's right there underneath. I need to. This one? Sure. And then uh, I'm not. The cutting board, sorry. Okay, so this is on high. I'm letting it really normalize underneath fat from the chicken. Okay, now I'm going to take my lemons. I'm going to slice them really thin, like paper thin. So you can see when I'm holding like this, and I'm protecting my fingers by having this out front and my thumb in the back. Okay. So you're going to go like this and just put these right on the top, like this. Really thin. This gives it a lot of flavor. One more question about the power and temperature level. So right now you have it on temperature nine. Yeah. And the power level? That's, that's the, the power same. level. That's, that's the, the, power the power level. level. Oh, okay. Yeah, so temperature is temperature. Yeah, if you have maybe somebody has the double one, they're different. Okay. So you can see what I did here. I put the rosemary on top of the chicken. Then I put the thin sliced lemons right on the top. I've got it fried. Okay. I, when I'm done cooking, I like everything to be green. Okay. So I'm letting this kind of caramelize. And then I'm going to go like this. Oh, yeah. And I'm just going to turn it over. So um, when I was making the chili, I told you when you put the top on, it holds in all the moisture. You can see this. This is the water evaporating. I do not want to hold the water in. What I want to do is caramelize everything. And I don't know if you can see that piece of chicken right there. It's kind of brown. That's what I'm going for. And then the lemons will caramelize underneath too, on the bottom sides of that. There we go. So I'm just gonna let it cook like that. And that's it. Does anybody have any, you can also, um, if you're not using a stove and you want to put it into the oven, you can do that too, if you have an oven. But I love these stoves because you can see what's happening here. I think that they cook better than, um, and, and safer, I should say, safer than gas stoves, especially for me that tends to leave things on high and then I walk away or I take the pan off and I've left the stove. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten up the next morning and I go, Oh my gosh, I left the burner on all night. So um, it's dangerous to do that. These, you can see you take it off and it just goes off. And as soon as you put it on, it goes right back and it heats right back up. So does anybody have any questions? Anybody has um, anybody been, let's see, my heating light goes off and on while cooking at low settings. Is that normal? Um, is it a single or a double? Is it the single one like this or a double? Can you answer that? It's a single. Hmm, that's interesting because I don't have that, that happen. Do you go lower? Is that what happens? You go maybe low like this? So is it you're looking for a temperature? 
I really enjoyed your demonstration. Thank you. Um, are you looking for a temperature? Like you can hit the temp and I know this is it for 20, but if I want to increase it, I can go like this and I can go to heat. And that's, if I hit heating, then that, that'll be at 5.5. If I hit temp, 20. And if I do plus, so it could be the issue that it's keeping it at 320. If you want to have a temperature, it'll go on and off. But um, it's um, heating. Uh, we have, going back to the question. Yeah, it's trying to maintain the temperature. Going back to the question that was about yeah. the heating light going on and off while cooking at low settings. Um, if your voltage input, so the the plug that you're using is too high or low, your um your unit will um shut down after one minute. So it could be that. Oh, it, it like I, I said about having two things plugged in. You have to make sure that your that your plug is dedicated just to this and you can't have anything else on it. So that could be the issue also. So I've turned mine up to 10 because I like it really caramelized. I'm really going for the brown on the lemon. You know, you can, um, I've at times, instead of chopping up the celery and the carrots, what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll in my pants and kind of steam them off and, you know, so that they're like fork tender. And then I'll put larger, just slices of onion. And then I'll toss the salt, the pepper, um, the oil, um, use, I sometimes I use five spice seasoning on my chicken. And then I'll put the oil in there and then the onions are all mixed up. And I fry it up like that and it infuses everything and the lemons. I mean, it's just, it's so tender and it's so wonderful. So I got this going now. So I'm almost done. My, um, my rosemary is infused, um. my chicken. Make sure that everything's on the bottom, all of your seasonings and onions and lemon juice because they're gonna keep browning and that's what's gonna give you all your flavor. Then what I do is I take the chicken out and I put it on a platter. Can I have a plate from over there? Because I think, um, make sure the internal temperature of your chicken is 165 degrees. Um, I have yeah. an answer to Joanne's question. So. When would you use the temperature settings instead of the power settings? Um, so for power vote mode versus temperature mode, if you need a specific cooking temperature, then you would use temperature mode. Um, instead, they require, or sorry, instead, um, your user manual suggests that you use power mode um, just because that one has the built-in microprocess monitors that look at, oh, that regulate the cookware temperature um, so your food doesn't burn. So if you're doing it at a certain temperature, it may burn, it's at the risk of overburning or yeah, overcooking. But if you're using the power mode, then um, there should be some regulation between your unit, the cookware and like your food. So that was the answer to that question. Nice. Okay, so now my chicken is done and I'm gonna set it out here. So all these wonderful flavors have infused into this kind of here. And you don't want to over, you know, you want to check to make sure that the temperature is right. You're going to be reheating up too. So now all of these little bits in here the lemons. So I'm going to keep the lemons separate. I like those to really burn. Uh, not burn, kind of brown. Set those to the side. So the lemons are going to caramelize and I'm going to put all these wonderful little onions and such
Okay, and then Karen, I've been looking for the answer um, to your question in the user manual. So some things that might be happening are um, maybe check the type of cookware that you're using, make sure it's magnetic, or make sure your pan is aligned on the cooktop alignment guide, which is just like the outline um, on your surface. It could also be that um, your cooktop unit sh is shutting down due to the overheating sensor. So maybe if you're heating empty cookware, that could be something, or it could be if you um, are blocking the fans or cool air inlets by your units. Um, that's what's coming up in the manual. If you want, you can grab your unit and come see me. No charge. Just bring whatever you want to cook and I'll teach you how to do this. It's so simple. Okay, so all this is done now. Yummy. So here's your veggies. There's a little lemon in Always. 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 Yeah, you can get a little more. And you but my grandson loves it when I put orange. You can take a whole orange and that is really wonderful too. So I'm gonna give you just a little chili. Look at that. Oh, this is just loaded with veggies. Loaded, loaded, loaded. Turn that down to five. And then maybe just a little bit of that chicken. Take a piece of the chicken, just a little bit. I love how that breaks down like that. Okay. Um, also guys, uh, going back to the power settings on your units, the default this power setting is fine. Well, by the way, it freezes. Was there any questions? Try the chicken. No. They're, I don't know what they're doing right now, but you can put this on low and let it simmer and it'll just kind of break apart. I did it really quickly, but um, I think everything tastes better the next day anyway. So. Okay, guys, we are getting to the tasting Try portion of this. With the spices. So hard. He's going to eat the chicken right now. Is that cooking stuff? Okay. All right. Um, in the meantime, let me repeat the uh, power settings. Okay. And how's that? Isn't that nice with the lemon? And The lemon is fantastic. Yeah. The lemon is just really makes it with those carrots and celery and Okay, so um, any other questions? When are you guys gonna come see me and cook? I love to cook. You'll have fun in my kitchen with me. Good, good. It's good. Um, okay, um, guys, in the meantime, I'm gonna answer some questions. Um, Ira, sorry, I think your, I didn't think your question came in. Um, Doug, the question oh. is, can you buy uh, the cooktop after the program. Do you mean by another cooktop or your own cooktop? Um, 
I, I will let you type a response to that. And then, uh, yeah, if you guys uh, fill out your monthly survey, so this should be your second one. Um, I emailed everyone who hasn't done them yet. They are due. Um, if you finish your survey and attend a cooking demonstration, which is this, uh, oh. you can keep your unit, your unit after the program. So um, as long as you satisfy those requirements, you can keep it. Um, and one of the doctors here at the clinic, she's also bilingual. So if doesn't necessarily have to have you, Ellie, that we could have one of the doctors that can interpret for you also. And the doctors are really wonderful. All right. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to go back to your question, your question about um, temperature versus power mode. So first of all, when you turn on your unit, um, the default mm -hmm. temperature setting for power mode is five. Um, you it's recommended that you use temperature mode if you have something that needs a specific temperature when you're cooking. Otherwise, power mode is good because it kind of lets you um, just keep things at a regulated level with your cooktop and your cookware. Um, let's see. Um, so also your cooktops will beep and shut off if the wrong type of cookware is put on the cooktop or no unit is placed on or no cookware is placed on the unit. Um, let's see, did that answer your guys' questions? Um, Chef Cindy, are the classes with you free? Yes. Yeah, for you. Looking, bring your, your top if you want, or I've got them here, and just bring whatever food you want me to help you with. Um, so I don't know if you guys can hear her, but she said that you can come in, you can bring your cooktop, you can bring food, um, and she'll show you whatever you want to learn. Um, and you can come through their clinic, East Bay Health, um, which is here in Lafayette. What time and can you call ahead? Yeah, call ahead. Um, it's I'm here from 10 to 2. Well, let's see. Yeah, 10 to 2, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And if you get some people together, I mean, those are the times that I'm here and you wanted something special um, and can get a group get together for a Saturday, I do charge for that. And I charge $25 a person. There has to be a minimum of 10 people. Um, do they bring ingredients or do they still bring their ingredients? They bring, I have everything. They just bring whatever, veggies, chicken, whatever. But I also teach you how to use spices, how to chop, how to how to handle food so that, you know, how long does food last? What's the temperature supposed to be? It's nice when you bring, you know, if you have a, you know, a son or a daughter that would love to learn to cook. Um, I teach as young as seven years old. So, um, and kids love to cook. I think that answers the next question that came in was, can, can we bring kids? So, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, the Saturday morning is a charge. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday isn't. Um, do we have other questions? What is the address? It's um, uh, 911 Moraga Road in Lafayette. Um, yeah. Let me... East Bay Hill. Thanks, guys. I hope to see you soon. All right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Um, it was great just seeing you all. Thank you again for coming. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us. Um, Priscilla, I know you asked for Chef Cindy's number, so I can type that up and put it in the um in the chat uh while we have the rest of you here do you have any questions for chef cindy or 
any questions for us about your units or anything else uh, relating to the program. Um, for those of you who are good, thank you so much for joining us uh, and bearing with us with our tech. <laughs> um, and yeah, we'll talk to you soon. If you have anything you want to chat about, feel free to stick around. Thank you, everyone.